today at this year's AMIC conference, raising the profile of risk is the real sort of focus of the event. So how, how can risk managers raise the profile of risk within the C-suite? What, what can they do to do that? Well, you're right. It's the, uh, it's the focus of this year's AMIC, and very appropriately so, because FM Global being a mutual company, working with our clients year after year, we see that that's an issue that our prime contact, the risk manager, grapples with time and time again, is how do you raise the profile of what they're doing to board level? So it's critical, I think, that risk managers have sound data, they have sound exposure analysis, such that when they go to the board, they have very solid, irrefutable facts that the board could consider when trying to understand the hierarchy of exposures that they face across their global footprints. So I think, first of all, it's important to have a solid foundation of research-backed facts as you do that. But secondly, it's the language, it's how you, how you position that with the board. Are you going to talk doom and gloom? And, and, and if it's not particularly well backed up by, by factual analysis uh, and more a sense of where the key strategic sites are, then the board's going to be less certain of what they're going to do with that. If you have fairly solidly analysed facts and you talk about the exposures of the company in terms of reputation, in terms of loss of market share, um, that's one thing. But you can also talk about the upside of risk as well. In other words, if the company is shown to have responded very well and has great robust business continuity measures in place against those key exposures, then the company can come out of an event very positively. And, and we've seen that in certain events around the world as well. So there's an upside to risk as well as a downside. And I think the more we can um, privilege that discourse with the board, the more successful risk managers will be. I think, I think showcasing the upside of risk is absolutely critical for, for, for companies. Do you think that C-suite consider loss mitigation and loss prevention as a key part of, of corporate strategy? They, they, they do. I think uh, our surveys show that there's a heightened awareness of, 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 of loss prevention strategy at board level. Uh, our surveys show that um, also that um, more than 90% of the companies we insure, which is the upper, mid and large commercial industrial sector, are aware that they have natural catastrophe exposures, for example, at, at one or other location, if not more, around the world. But alarmingly, only 20% think that they're well placed uh, to do something about that, or uh, only 20% are actively concerned about that. So as you, as you look at that, you, you think, all right, well, there's a big gap here between awareness and actually what we're doing as an organization about that. So there again, what, what we're in business with our clients to do is to make sure that we give them the best information they can have to do something about their natural catastrophe exposures. Um, most companies tend to think there's not a lot you can do about natural catastrophes, and yet there is. There's some very simple things. They go from really simple procedures that need to be in place to mitigate risks, flood defense, uh, flood, flood response, emergency response, and so on, to the more expensive flood defense uh, measures that they can take if necessary to mitigate risk. So I think boards are becoming more aware of risk as time goes on and of course the corporate governance environment helps with that as well. Is there any industries out there that really lead the way when it comes to, to attitude towards risk? Who's, who's setting the, the pace on that? Well at FM Global we, we ensure the broad range of industries. There's, 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 there's no industry other than perhaps the nuclear industry that, that, that we don't ensure. So we see a good range there. Um, I think the ones that absolutely cannot afford an inter interruption. So you look at some waste to energy entities or some power supply entities, their stakeholders, local municipalities, uh, quite apart from their shareholders, will not accept power interruption. The ramifications are too high, the penalties are too great. So you tend to find industries such as that are very, very focused on risk management and business continuity. Um, the pharmaceutical industry, from a, a liability perspective, from a reputational risk perspective, uh, cannot afford uh, significant incidents. So they tend to be highly focused and attuned to supply chain risk, 
to physical risk mitigation. So I'd, I'd, I'd point to pharmaceutical, to power, uh, semiconductor industry as well. Um, you have massive concentrations of value in the, in the semiconductor industry, uh, such that even a fairly benign incident can have a fairly significant ramification just simply because of the value of throughput. So those are some examples I could give you of uh, in industries that are very attuned to uh, loss prevention uh, processes and uh, sound business continuity measures. You mentioned supply chain risk and, and business continuity there. Yeah. What, what do you think the biggest risks are that are facing organisations today? Well, the World Economic Forum recently mapped uh, the risks facing organisations and, and many of them are on a macro macro levels and broad economic shock, uh, things of that nature. But we were interested to see, being a property insurance specialist, that there are quite a few what you might term property risk exposures that, that, uh, that are up there in terms of major concerns. They have to do with natural catastrophes again. Uh, they have to do with equipment breakdown. They have to do, to your point, to supply chain exposures. Companies are becoming more and more broad in their global footprint, that's changing their risk fairly consistently as time goes on. So our clients are noticing they have to become more and more robust in, their, in, their, in the way in which they manage supply chain risk. So that, uh, yes, I think that the profile is increasing and the uh, key risks that they seem to be facing are are to do with supply chain, they are to do with equipment breakdown as well, key pieces of equipment, and they, as we have been saying for many years, they are also to do with natural catastrophe exposures around the world and the way in which they gear up to manage those events as and when they, frankly, will occur.